welcome back to another video on our channel in today's video we will be talking about sets the fundamentals of sets so you will be learning most if not all that you need to learn about sets at your level we're going to be using this example that is on our screen to help us to understand the basics so let's jump right in our problem says a survey was conducted among a group of grade 6 students to see whether they like football or tennis a Venn diagram was constructed from the information gathered. This is our Venn diagram and here we have some questions that we will get to right after we answer some basic questions. What is a set? A set is a collection of things or a group of things that has something in common. In our example, we'll be looking at a group of grade 6 students. A group of students in grade 6. So this is what our students in our set has in common. They're all grade 6 students. So that is what a set is. Again, a set is a group of things that has something in common. What about a universal set? What is that? Well, think of the word universe. What comes to mind? Everything, right? So, a universal set contains everything, all elements that is in our problem. In our case, our universal set would be the entire group of grade 6 students that are included in our survey. The concept of a universal set is relevant because elements in a universal set can be further grouped into smaller sets given that these elements have something in common that is different from the other elements in the set. So what do we have here? In our universal set, that is everything in, in our box, let's call it U, we see that there are smaller sets. There's a set of students in our, from our survey or our group of grade 6 students that likes football and there's a set of students in our group that like tennis so while our universal set is a, the group of grade 6 students that were included in this survey within our universal set are smaller sets of students that have something else in common so we group them and we call these smaller sets subsets as you can see our group of students that like football overlaps with our group of students that like tennis what does that mean? These two sets are overlapping because they share at least one common element. In our case, they share 10. 10 students fit or fall within both sets. We call this area our intersection. So now let's move over to our questions to see if they can help us to understand some more things about sets. So the first question, how many students like football only? The answer to this is 15. Why? Because there are 15 students that is not a part of the intersection. These students only like football. Next question. How many students like tennis only? 12. Why 12? Because in our tennis subset, we can see that there's only 12 students in the area that applies only to tennis. So only 12 students like tennis. Question 3. How many students like both football and tennis? This question is asking us how many students fit in both subsets. And the answer to this is 10. This area is the intersection. Football intersecting tennis. So on a problem, if, this, if we call this A and we call that B, you may see something like this. What is A intersect B asking? In the area that subsets A and B overlap, which elements fall in that area? So that is another way that a question can be phrased around a problem or a Venn diagram like this one. Let's look at question four. How many students do not like football? The number of students that do not like football includes all the students that fall outside of the football subset all the students so here we have 12 and look we also have 8 so the number of students that do not like football is 20. look at question 5 how many students like football so how many students do like football the number of students that like football falls in the football subset so it includes everyone in the football subset so the answer to this would be 25 and this question 
question 5 is different from question 1 because question 1 is asking how many students like football only right so this is saying how many students like only football they don't like anything else whereas this is asking how many students like football so it's not saying that they don't they cannot like anything else it's just asking how many students like football overall and the answer to that is 25 everything in this circle there let's pull up to look a little bit further so this question question six how many students like football or tennis so look back at our chart. How many students like football or tennis? It doesn't say football and tennis. Nor does it say football, tennis, or both. So this question is asking us, how many students like football? If they don't like football, they like tennis. So the answer to this question would be 15 plus 12. And that is 27. 27 students either like football or tennis. Now look at question 7. How many students like football, tennis, or both? Now this question is asking you how many students is asking you for this area. How many students like football? How many students like tennis? Or how many students like the two sporting events? So the answer to this would be 15 plus 10 plus 12. 15 plus 10 is 25 plus 12 is 37. There's another name that we call this area. This area that I just shaded is the union of set A and set B. So you could see a problem that asks you A, what is the union of set A and set B? Or what is set A union B? And the answer to that would be everything that falls in set A, everything that falls in set B, and everything that falls in both sets. So the two subsets. And that amount is 37. Now the, the union of two sets is different from the universal set. The universal set includes everything that falls into our problem. Everything. So in this Example, we're looking at a group of grade 6 students that were surveyed to, to find out which sporting event they liked. So every student in our Venn diagram is a part of our universal set, including those that fall outside of the subsets that are in the circles in our Venn diagram. So that is our universal set, whereas the union of two subsets or two sets are those that fall within each of those sets. It falls in set A, set B, and both. So it really falls within the two sets. So the entire area that is covered by the two subsets, that is the union. Everything outside of that is not included in the union of the set. I hope that was clear. So let's look at our last question in this problem. How many students do not like football nor tennis? So this is speaking to students that fall outside of the two subsets. And the answer to this is eight. Eight students do like neither football nor tennis. What have we covered so far? We covered the definition of a set, what a set is, a universal set. We also looked at what a subset is, what the intersection of a set is, what the union of a set is. And we also looked at how to answer questions relating to, to sets. We also looked at overlapping sets. And in, in, in our example here, the subsets within our universal set are overlapping because they share common elements. You know, in this case, they have 10 students that fall within both subsets. Now, let us say that there were no students that liked both football and tennis. If that was the case, then our Venn diagram would look something like this. It would look this way because there would be no overlapping elements. And we call this set at this joint set because there are no overlapping elements within our set. So that is something else that you need to know. You also need to know what are called empty sets. Now, as we mentioned, a set is a group of things that has something in common. Now, the, the acceptable definition of an empty set is a set that has a nothing. Now, if you are like me and you think, then you will ask the question, if a set is a collection of things, how comes you can have an empty set? As soon as I find that out, 
I will let you know. But for now, what you need to remember is that an empty set has nothing in it. There's nothing in it. What else do you need to know about sets? You also need to know what are finite sets and what are infinite sets. If you know what the word finite and infinite means, then you, you, you already know what a finite set is and what an infinite set is. A finite set is simply a set that has a fixed number of elements. It has a finite number of elements. Whereas an infinite set, there is no limit to the number of elements in an infinite set. So look back at our example. A group of grade 6 students were surveyed, they were counted, and the results, the information was presented in this Venn diagram. That means that in our example, we are looking at a finite number. So this is an example of a finite set. What about an infinite set? The elements in an infinite set is not fixed. It is limitless. As long as forever goes on, it will continue. Usually an infinite set will have something like this. Set A equals 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 and it continues. Because, and this is a set of natural counting numbers. Usually the elements within an infinite set are numbers. So it, it continues because we know that numbers are infinite. You can come from now until forever and you can and you'll still be counting because numbers are infinite. So usually an, in a, a, an infinite set has something like that. Or you may see a is equal to the set of not whole numbers or odd numbers or natural numbers or real numbers, something to that effect. So that is the difference between a finite and an infinite set. You also need to know what are called equal and equivalent sets. So let's look at that. Let's say A is equal to, set A is equal to 2, 4, 6. Set B is equal to 6, 2, 4. This is an example of an equal, equal pair of sets. Why? Because they have the same number of elements and the elements are the same in both sets. So in both of the sets, we have the same elements and the same number of elements. So that is what equal sets are. An equivalent set, on the other hand, has the same number of elements, the same number of elements. This set A has three elements, set B has three elements, but there's a difference. They, the, all the elements in the sets are not the same. So that, that is what makes this set an equivalent set. I'm going to show you another example of an equivalent set. A, B, C. This is also an example of an equivalent set because even though the elements in set A are numbers and the elements in set B are letters, they are equivalent because they have the same number of elements. So once a set has in the same number of elements, it could be letters, numbers, names, pictures, Whatever it is, the sets are equivalent when they have the same number of elements. We have looked at what sets are, what the universal set is, what subsets are, what the union intersection of a set. We've also considered what an empty set is, what a disjoint set is, what, a, what an overlapping set looks like, and also what are finite, infinite, equal and equivalent sets. We've also answered some common questions that can be asked when we are looking at a Venn diagram. So, I hope that that is enough for you to help you out with your exams that are coming up. If this video was of help to you, please let us know by liking, subscribing, whatever you want to do. So, thank you so much for watching. All the best and see you again soon.